So we had, so if you're, uh, if you're coming in on the second session and you haven't uh, painted this, you, you have the option, there's a video that shows you how to draw and paint. Um, but we are in the second session of painting this city scene. I'm so excited. I was looking at it this morning and thinking about my glazing colors. Uh, and we started with a yellow under for most of us. Some and by the way, everybody did a fabulous job with this last week. I'm so I loved the pieces, the underpaintings that you came out with. Um, so my thought, of course, is that we should do a uh, purple glaze. Um, why? Why should we do a purple glaze? What's the thought process on that? Anybody have a guess? Why a purple? Why a purple face? It's opposite. It's the it's the complementary, right? It's the complementary, yeah. Yeah, it's the complement of, and we know, and also this is a very dark scene, and we've started with light, so I think it'll be good to go in to to add some dark in as we start to layer our colors before we get into it. What happened to my? Give me one second, you guys. My tape is somewhere. I have to tell you, I really I think you guys should really credit yourself. This class has come amazingly far from where we started, like what, really two years ago? To, I mean, some of you might have been taking a little bit longer. How long have we been kind of regularly coming to class? Two and a half. Yeah, a uh, year and a half, two years. Yeah. Two years and a half, I would say. Oh, two and a half years, you're right. Say in March, early March 2020 or end of February 2020. God, how time flies when you're having fun, isn't it? It's amazing. I want you to think about as we, as I push you to go farther, as you push yourself to go farther, I want you to also step back and go, damn, <laughs> I'm getting really good at this. So I'm going to start with, let's see, a little ultramarine. I'm going to mix a purple. If you have dioxazine purple, you can totally use that. I don't, I don't have that. Um, so I'm mixing ultramarine blue with a little bit of quinacridone. Yeah. Um, with a little bit of quinacridone. I hear crying. Well, because I'm feeding them not fast enough. I, I clearly the chicken is not coming out of the oven fast enough. <laughs> um, and once again, because I'm glazing, I'm going to use the biggest brush I possibly can so I can get this stage done. And I want this to be a very dark face. So if you remember, glazing is a lot of water, um, less. Oh, yeah, it's fabulous. A lot of water, uh, less actual kind of clunk, chunks of paint. And, and uh, in this particular case, it's okay. You know, it looks like I've kind of covered up everything, which I have. But you know, this is a fairly dark painting in a lot of ways. Now, if I want to, I can go back in once I glaze. And by the way, I've had people ask me this question many times. And the, the answer to the question, what you're asking is like, can I glaze more than once or is there only one point? Um, so I want you to notice here, I'm pulling off in the lightest areas, I'm pulling off the glaze so that the lights are popping back out, but they've got a little purple glow. Let's see, that's here. And in your underpaintings, that should be pretty clear, but you can also use you know, pink, pink. I really love this part. It's the fun part. light. So I can let my lights pop out. There's still a little bit of purple in there, but like my lights are still coming forward. So anyway, you can glaze as many times as you want to. 
You do not have to glaze the whole thing. You can glaze portions if you want to just do portions. So you should think about glazing in this very, as like always an option for you at any stage of the painting, except for the beginning when there's no underpainting on there. Well, I guess you could technically like glaze your, but we call that something different. We call it toning. All right. So everybody go ahead and glaze. If you want to, you send a picture over so I can see it. And uh, for those of you who haven't seen, there is a survey out right now, and it's important that you let me know what kind of things you want to study next year so I can set that up for you. I'm very excited to like establish classes and I can bring classes back if we need to. Let's see. Hi, Emma. Uh, hey, everybody. So the glaze, look at how the glaze is kind of clustering and creating little bits of texture. I also see it's got, oh yeah, I'm just see if it's terrible for whole construction. What's really interesting about this particular sketch, there's a little bit of perspective going on, but not that much. So it's very, what I would call manageable. It's very simple. And really the focus is on the shapes and the values. And you're gonna find on these top layers, it's gonna be on brushwork, right? Let's see. Oh yeah, what's the color that you're using, Ani, for your, is that purple? Just a lighter purple? It's a, it's a purple, but more um, like- Pinky purple, like it's I like, like it. crimson with um, ultra ultramarine, simply. Ah, uh, yes, I like it. So I, I have to yeah, so put pinky. alizarin. <laughs> right, you have to use your alizarin. So I really like that. Look how different uh, hers is from mine. Oh, you can't really see it here. I'll send mine across so you guys have a picture. Um, yeah, mine's got a more, well, right now mine is quite flat because uh, in places, right? It looks a little flattened and pushed back because I, the bright colors uh, are gonna be, I've, I've dulled my bright colors with a compliment. Um, on the top layers, uh, uh, this feels counterintuitive, this idea, uh, but I also really love, oh, what's your, is that just red, Emma? That's fabulous. Fabulous. Oh my God, these are fabulous. Anyway, no, it has, it has a, um, ultramarine and what did I mix? Ultramarine and cadmium and cadmium. Red. Oh, interesting. So but I, maybe it's too, maybe it's too thin. Maybe I need to put more on. I don't know. Try again, do another layer. But I guess my point here is there's more than one way to do this. And I like it. I'm not disliking any of these I'm seeing. I'm sort of explaining my, my way of thinking about this is that like it feels counterintuitive, but I love a kind of dark, murky underpainting. I like it when things are a little bit swampy. I like them when they're looking a little bit nice, Rajmi. Yep, yep, beautiful. Uh, so you can see Rashmi's and mine are kind of going in a similar direction. And right now it's not very satisfying, right? Because it's so murky. But in my experience, bright colors sit beautifully on top of swampy, murky 
kind of grayish darks. So but they will also sit nicely on top of uh, brighter paintings. So that's, I, I mean, there's no, but I just wanted to explain why, why I'm going in this direction. Uh, there's a method to the madness. And whenever things feel kind of, you know, sometimes there's these counterintuitive layers to painting, right? Like there's just that you think it's what you think should be had, just like drawing, you know, it's like, no, that line can't possibly be going this way. It's actually going the other way, right? Um, it's the same with painting, like layers are going, but I now I'm waiting for it to dry. But while I'm waiting for it to dry, I'm going to start putting uh, what I would consider my top colors. So there are some reds we'll want to be including. Let's see. Oh, very nice, Emma. So I like it. So, um, so you've got this combo of what we're doing. I like how warm your underpainting is. I love that. And even with the glaze, I feel like there's a warmth to it that's beautiful. I love that. That dark is going to be, that's going to serve you well. Uh, I picked up some cadmium red medium because I usually work with cad red light and I wanted to have some different reds. I'm going to put cad red light down too. Look at the difference between those two. Even on the Skype screen, which is generally kind of hard to see color, you can really see the color. And I'm going to put some quinacridone. Cool. So I've got these three reds here. Kind of warm reds and a cool red. This raccoon keeps, I'm dead serious. This raccoon keeps sneaking into my studio and knocking over my painting equipment at night. It's hilarious. In fact, it even left. Um, it's hilarious until it starts destroying your studio. Yeah, yeah. He's not, he'll, he'll have to be thrown out if he's uh, destroying my studio. But uh, right now he's just trying to get food. And I have a, often I forget to take my bucket of paint and water, paintbrushes and water off the ground. And if it's on the ground, he knocks it over. And then I lose, and then sometimes uh, uh, equipment is kind of obscured. Right now, it's just funny. We'll see. Um, so I've got some reds here. I think I need some blues as well. And maybe a little bit of, I need some yellow. I think we're going to need all the colors this time. There's some yellow. This is, oh, wait, you can't really see that over here. Put the yellow here. That's cadmium yellow medium. <laughs> I might put some lemon, lemon yellow down, lemon yellow, lemon yellow down too, if I can find it, where I use it. Yes, there. And so I'm kind of giving myself cool and warm options of almost all the colors. And then just looking here to see, we've got, I've got ultramarine. I think a little phthalo blue is in order as well. I think we need a little bit of phthalo blue. I just brought it in. Ah, sorry, I have phthalo, that's phthalo green. There's phthalo blue. I'm gonna put a little phthalo blue down next to my ultramarine blue. And maybe some white. So basically I'm just laying out a basic color palette to see what I can do. And then as this starts to dry, it's taking, it's cold this morning. Oh, there we go. It's taking a little bit of time. If you feel like it's just parts of your painting that are struggling to dry, you can also kind of scrub it out a little bit. I think I'd like to start with the car. So I'm starting with kind of a smallish flat. And I'm going to go to, I think I'm going to go to the darkest areas first. So I've got, and if you want to, what I don't have here is Alizar and Crimson. So if you want to, and mix a little bit of blue and yellow in with my red. Why would I do that? 
Why would I mix in blue and yellow with my darker red? Any idea? I want to do that because um, the sort of shadowy reds have green in them, right? Or a little bit like more muted. So because I don't have green here, I'm going to mix blue and yellow to make green, pop that in with my red. And I'm really working the darker parts of the car, which are kind of, boy, I can even go darker. I'm going to do that are kind of down here. So even though I'm mixing red, it's a kind of shadowy red down here. It kind of is shadowy red down here. And I'm using a fairly small brush at this point. Over here. Kind of down here. Um, would you guys like me to send this? I, I can also send a copy of this picture across so you can see it better, the, um, the actual picture in color. So let me send this up as well. Across the thread so you can see it. So I'm mixing a little green with my red in the shadow areas. It's kind of one or two, but it's a little bit brighter up here. So I'm adding a little bit of cad red light into my shadow mix. So even though it's shadow. Oh, we saw whatever yeah, we're doing there. Missing, I like that reaction. That's a good reaction. <laughs> missing art class, oh no. <laughs> We like that. We get it. Can you see how I'm kind of moving around the lights, particularly the reflected lights? I'm kind of moving all around the car. Really focusing on the shadowy parts, not the not the brights or the yeah the areas that are light. So all of these these reds have a touch of green mixed in. It also it's it's got this cool red kind of shadowy red here. It's red here and then it turns into yellow. <laughs> That's very messy. I'm gonna have to clean that up, but not now. And then there's a time, there's this kind of around the edge. Now notice my my lines are thick right now. I can fix that. I can fix that when I go in with my other layers, but for the moment I'm gonna let them dry. And then the other dark that's in here. Oh, Hermes, get off the. <laughs> come over here. Come over here. You might as well come and say hello. Come on. He just jumped up and walked over the computer keyboard. Come here. At least he didn't walk into a print. He did not. Not this time. <laughs> he's so funny. He's a better. He's a better studio cat now. He's a better studio cat than he used to be. Here, I, he wants to say hi. Here, hold on. I'll pop him up. So I am. He's so, so big. Sweet. He's so big and so cute. Aww. I know, right, Olga? Look at him. Yes, yeah, he's, he's really so, big. He's so big. And he he actually like totally softens when you pick him up. Like even if he's kind of wild, he's like, see how he just gets like, ah, oh, now he's like, I'm gonna run around and cause trouble again. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. <laughs> 
He's gorgeous. He really so is cute. a good boy. I know you're, you're watching him grow up. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Remember when he was little. Remember? Oh my God. All right. So I'm about to add another color to this palette. I'm going to put on, and you guys have a couple of course options as always to do this. There's a kind of dark here in the windows and in the tire and in the shadow. So I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue. Sorry, I already have ultramarine blue. I'm going to add burnt umber to my palette. Burnt umber. What color are they make? We're making for the cake. Yes. Meow. Meow. You made me open the door. And now he's back inside. But now the dragon is outside. And yeah, rabbit is like, And he's pissed. He wants to be out there with him. No, no, he's back. He's oh, back. He's back. And poor oh. rabbit is cold. But now oh. we can't because dragon is outside. He's so naughty, my dragon. Or so naughty. It's like mommy says this word naughty. Oh, then she usually but he, he actually I'm telling this this to him so much that he thinks it's one of his names. Right. And he actually right. answers right. his back in pleasure when I tell him. Yep, he doesn't know. <laughs> like, yes, it's me, but me. <laughs> me, she means me. The naughty one. That's my name. All right. So I mixed a little bit of ultramarine um blue with a little bit of burnt umber to get my dark. And then here. I'm kind of putting in my tire. So wait, this really, I look at this, this kind of goes straight. Yeah, I think it goes, yeah, it goes straight down like that. And then there's a, like a bit in the window here. See that and see how I'm now kind of carving back. And then really there's a lot of this dark Here, I'm probably, I might even cover up some of the lights because I can add them back in once this dries. And then over here. Yeah. And then here, there's this kind of skim. I'll take a look in a second. I just want to what you're sending. There's this bit that goes here this way, right, which is kind of the all right. Uh, Paul, you want to go lighter with those colors. Let more water and a little bit more green in your red and much waterier, right? So there's, here's kind of the darks. I wonder if I should pull this out. Just a cascading domino effect. Sorry, Leah. Hi. Sorry Hi, for Linda. so late. Um, I, I just have a question. Those lights, did, did, did you put them in today at the beginning of the class? The lights? No. This yeah, where they were from last time. Somebody just jumped on the keyboard and muted me, and it was not me. <laughs> um, uh, I put them in. Uh, that was that was for my underpin. So the reason okay. that the okay. lights look bright is that mm -hmm. I glazed in purple. Ah, okay. Perfect. I glazed a color, and then okay. I kind of pulled it out with my, um, and then I kind of pulled it out with my. Uh, here, hold on. So I glazed in purple because it's the complement to yellow. Mm -hmm. And then I I pulled out, I took like a, uh, um, I took a paper towel and I kind of rubbed out the whites. So they look like I added light, but really I just made everything around it darker. Okay. No okay. lights have been added. So the only thing we've been working on is uh, 
the reds. The reds. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Good questions. Uh, we were just talking about this, Linda, because one of the things I'm saying is I don't think this class starts late enough in the evening for you all. So uh, probably we're going to start it a bit later in 2023. Okay. Yeah, so that everybody can actually, you know, make it home from work and yeah. And now, you know, we have no London attendance in this class, mm -hmm. and that's because this class ends at four in London, which is really not enough time. So there we go. I feel like the something looks wrong about this window. I think this window is coming out a little too much. So I'm going to nip back the window with a little bit of white and blue. I think I, I got the perspective on this window a little bit off. So I laid it in and now I'm like, hmm, it's more like that. See that? So see how I'm able to correct that? I'm just using a kind of lighter color, which I may or may not keep. Oh, God, that's not good either. Okay, let me see what's really happening here. Really, it's short here and then down. There we go. So be careful with this window. It's easy to make it too big. Do you see how I had to reshape it? Yes, there we go. Now just reshape it quite a bit. So, and I'm not even sure I still have it right, but I'm going to keep it as it is. Uh, maybe I need to get a little bit more. So be aware, be e it's easy to kind of lose your original drawing in this. It's okay to kind of pull it, you know, get it back. And I can. Do this and then I'm going to take a little bit of CAD red light and add it in the light parts. Look at the difference between this red and the red that we're using for the shadow color of the car. Significant. And we need it, right, to show how things kind of color in and here I can really see there's sort of light and dark reflections happening. I'm kind of edging and there's light here. There's kind of light here around the edge. I'm mixing in a little cad red medium. I'm going to darken it just a bit. But these are significant. Getting these light dark shifts is important when you're doing city because it doesn't look like this. You're probably not registering it in the same way. But this car uh, is turning towards the light and away from the light. And we convey that with the lights and the darks. And often, if, as you're working on this, just like I am, if you're noticing, oh, this doesn't quite look right, right? Like pay attention to maybe I brought this up too high. I don't really know right now. Bring this down a little bit, right? Pay attention to where the darks and lights shift because that's where you're really, notice how dark it is down here. 
Notice how light it is around the light because the light is facing us. So, and if you're having trouble with it, of course, I can do my best to help. But a lot of this is trial and error. You can see I'm, I'm, I'm mucking around too. Um, and the lights, which we're starting to get into because now we've got our midtones and our darks in. Um, I'm going to actually mix a touch of yellow with my white because I want it to be a little bit more uh, warm. So, I'm a, well, that's a mess. Let's see. So, like kind of these brights that are here, you know, they're white. Then there's like There. And then there's like a big one here. I'm I'm sort of tinting my white my white highlights with yellow. I want them warm. I can decide later, of course, right, that I can cool them down. There's a couple of. And of course, because it's still wet, because I'm too excited to like stop. I'm sometimes getting a little red in. That's okay. I can cover that up on the next layer, or maybe I like having little bits of red bleed into my white. Maybe that looks kind of nice. You see how we're kind of layering in. We start with the darks as usual, and then kind of layer in my lights. Oh, it's already looking kind of nice. Uh, maybe too bright there. I'm gonna like put a little bit more yellow. And then sometimes you'll see your, your reds are going to layer in kind of, um, you'll get too much light, right? This is way, this got way too big. So now I'm going back in with my red. I might need one or two layers here. So yeah, that got way too bright. So I'll have to go in with my dark, dark red. To see how I can kind of nip stuff back. Your ability to be able to get these details, I'm not going to be able to teach you how to do that. You're, you're going to need to just start to kind of um, play around and see how much you can get. Um, but the general principle, the general kind of rule of thumb here is that you start with the bigger shapes and you move to the smaller ones once you've got the bigger shapes locked in. So how detailed you get, that's going to be how well you see the shape shifts. And then there's this kind of orangey yellow thing happening here. So you see how I'm not going right into that detail and kind of layering in a lighter color. And then in here, it's a little bit darker. So I'm using kind of blue and white. Using I can go in and add the details later, but I'm starting with these bigger shapes. So I take a little bit of that blue. Okay. 
Nice. You know, you kind of, the general rule is you get in the basic darks, mediums, and lights, and from the, you'll see that your painting will look pretty good from there. So often you don't need as much detail as you think, but the brain, the left brain wants to start with the detail. I'm amazed. I'm always amazed because I'm like, people want to start with the detail when I'm like, don't do the detail, do the bigger things. And then when you get the bigger things done, nobody wants to do the detail, you know, <laughs> like really, we just don't want to do detail. <laughs> Yep. Yep. Linda, I was just going to say, look at how fabulous that looks. In a weird way, it's kind of done. You know yeah, what I mean? I in a weird <laughs> way. But <laughs> I think you should start adding some colors in there just, to, just for the practice, right? Yeah. It's neat. I was waiting for the glazing to, to dry. Yeah. You don't necessarily have to. Oh, okay. Yeah. You can like, remember like uh, the glazing helps kind of unify things. So... Okay. So, you know, a little bit of purple, a little bit of yellow in all your colors that you're mixing on the top, that'll totally work. And while I'm waiting for my, and this is a good point. So like, I'm actually gonna, cause I've started to layer top colors in and I wanna wait for them to dry. I'm gonna move to another part of the painting cause I'm enjoying doing the, the lights. I'm gonna move over here and get some of these oranges in. They're kind of defining around the color. Look at that. See how this orange light is kind of fuzzy and it's got kind of bits that are more yellow. So if you can see here, I'm kind of glazing in a little yellow into the center and a little bit like the way we do um, clouds where there's this kind of tapping. That's how I'm doing the kind of fuzziness of the light. And I've got some orange on my brush and there's some oranges over here, so I might as well pop them in. Yellow. Right, this looks kind of whitey yellow. So I might get a lot of yellow in here, a tiny bit of orange, but mostly yellow. This is like, I'm not sure I like these kind of uh, lights so pixelated, like so, like an overexposed photo, right? I'm not sure I want that in my painting. So I'm making my lights kind of soft, a little bit softer and more fuzzy. You do not have to, you could totally make these. Let's see, is there anywhere else kind of in here? So you see, I'm kind of moving around and like kind of sprinkling this color where I think it should be. Maybe there's a touch of here. Yeah. All right, and now I'm gonna go back to dark. More, I'm gonna try mixing. My darks aren't quite as dark. They're still dark, but they're not quite as dark. So I'm trying to mix thalo blue and um, uh, a touch of white and, uh, and ultramarine, sorry, uh, and burnt umber. I can see when I lay this down next to the tire, right, that it's definitely lighter. So see how I'm adding more light here so that that's particularly the on the edge and I'm mixing it right in. So that's, as you're kind of evaluating value. That's one of the things that we do, cleaning up those messy orange stripes I did by. It's a little bit darker here. There we go. I'm using the edge of my brush, kind of top edge of my brush. I'm like I'm carving out. <laughs> I'm gonna have to clean up those again. Okay, where else is there? Oh, hello.
He just wants to visit with you guys. Oh, oh, by the way, you guys, there's no class next week because it is Thanksgiving uh, for the US. So um so uh I mean next uh, Friday yeah, next week, Friday, next Friday, Friday, next Friday and Saturday. Oh. There will be no classes on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday because okay. I will be visiting my grandchild in Pendleton. All right, well done. Yeah. Um, classes will resume on Sunday. I'll send a note out about it, but there's no classes next week. All right. Yeah. I mean, there's classes next week. There'll be class on Tuesday. Um, and there will be class on Sunday. Leah? Yeah. What is this color mix that uh, that gray like color mix you've used on top of that uh, window? It, no, no, on, it's on just a car. The ultramarine. It's just ultramarine blue and brown. Okay, burnt umber. Bur sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Yep, absolutely. That's almost always my no, dark. I, I, no, I no, no, I just checking. want to know the. I, no, I'm just uh, asking the light color on top of that. That what, grayish that? blue. Yes. I'm about to get rid of that. Well, am I? Uh, that is, oh, great. Um, that is phthalo blue, white, and a touch of brown. So that's okay. phthalo. And I'm using phthalo, uh, good question. Uh, and I'm using phthalo also for, uh, uh, I'm using phthalo for uh, the side, the street color as well, phthalo blue with ultramarine and white because I think it provides a kind of a cooler, it's slightly cooler, I think this blue. Um, and you're right, and there's a little bit, I think I put that in there because there's little tiny bits of it. That. Yeah, that's a phthalo blue with white and brown. Um, in many cases, I'm going to get rid of it, but not in all cases. It's going to be kind of, because it is this kind of cool little blue. And then kind of going back here. So I'm I'm mixing brown ultramarine. Sorry, uh, um, God, I just can't talk this morning. I'm mixing um, burnt umber with different blues to get these different kind of grays and darks. And then if I need to lighten it a little bit, I'll add a little bit of white to it. So see, now I'm starting to kind of pull the, sorry, that's a little bit bright, I wonder. Hmm. I'm now kind of moving around. Uh, the lighter parts of the sidewalk, I'm using definitely phthalo, definitely burnt umber, and definitely more white with touches of red in it because there's so much reflection. There's kind of a pinky color. It's because of the car. There's this kind of pinky bit. So it's brown, blue, white, and then a touch of red. It's kind of peachy. Now, this is different in different places. It's key to kind of pick that up. It's 
you see how I'm going kind of darker here, I'm going to go quite light here. And definitely almost an orange. So I'm going to take some of that orange that I mixed and put it into my blue here. I'm sorry, my, yeah, my gray that I've mixed here so that there's a little bit of, so what you'll start to see is that like different colors because of all the lights. There's all these like, uh, different like sort of reflections of light in here. It's fascinating. Yeah, that car in the front is super dark. I'm going to start once again with Number here. Notice I'm skipping around as I start to lay uh, different parts of this out, out. I don't try to finish it. Right, I just try to get kind of enough in there so I can move on to the next piece. So what I'm really noticing is a little bit of what I'm really noticing is that I want to get this dark color in the front. So I mix a lot of that dark. I'm paying pretty close attention to it. And actually I blended in a little bit of fallow into my ultramarine blue mix. I decided I liked that. Sometimes I'm letting a little bit of my dark kind of blend in a little with my, with my lights. Yeah. Right, so I'm moving around as I need to, which I think is really key in a painting like this, that you don't get stuck. You don't get stuck trying to finish this. By the way, don't laugh, but this is how you make a lot of drinks at Starbucks at the same time. <laughs> Explain. You do not, you start a drink, but you don't finish it before starting the next drink. It feels counterintuitive, uh, because you're doing the same thing, like you're putting all the no, notes. Oh, you're all, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're taking the tasks that take the most time, and you're keeping them going. So steaming milk on the hot bar takes a long right. time, yeah. right? right? If you have to do like three hot drinks and then a frappuccino, which is a cold drink, right? Then you're, um, you have a you know a you have to also put build that into the mix but i think the thing that i found the toughest is that once i started the drink you know i i steam my milk i cue my shots i put my little flavor pumps in and then i'm like i want to finish the drink but i don't finish the drink until i start the milk steaming and the shot cueing for the next drink and that felt really weird but that's a little bit like what we're doing right we're moving we're not finishing an area we're kind of laying just enough in and so for the same reason, right? Because you yeah. use a, all the same color, but all that color that you got exactly. To yes, Sandra, A plus, absolutely. You're probably finding that yourself as you're kind of going through that it's helpful, right? To kind of move around. It means you don't get stuck, but it also means you kind of do the biggest tasks first and the tasks that take the most time. Which I was fascinated by. I'm like. It's interesting how we have to, I think that's one of the things that's hard, right? And we have to remind ourselves of is that we're kind of moving around 
I nice. think it's a it's a painting thing, right? You can't do that in drawing, really. Sort you of. You can do that in drawing. You can totally do that in drawing. You can do it in everything. You can. You can. So you start with the biggest areas. You, you're talking about sprinkling color around, but it also works in terms of developing detail, right? So you right. kind of work from big shape to big shape, and that doesn't feel. Um, I think that often feels like not right. Right, like it feels like, oh wait, I should, you know, just like I'm like, oh, I should finish this drink before I start my next drink, but nope, I need to, I need to get my next drink going so that I keep the flow going. I'm going faster, and it's the same with painting. You and drawing, you kind of have to keep your um, flow going. You guys are going to have to put up with this while I go through my learning curve of like, but it's been blowing my mind because I'm like, oh my god, this is just like painting. Yeah. you just get one of those italian coffee machines oh. there you go but those are hard to maintain too like the latte it's like a big task you got to like connect it to the tube and then you got to put the milk in and then you've got to clean it indeed yeah. you know there's so, a much better way of doing latte at home so you use a, the milk frother instead of a machine the machine yeah. adds, get a adds water to it yep that's uh, right adds steam and it's it's a mess to clean exactly it right. takes a long time. It makes a noise. Right. Do you have one of those? Do you have one I do, but I don't, use the, I don't use the latte part. I, I use the milk frother. Are I you a too. coffee drinker? The, yes, I am. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's a... I, it, I, do, a, the same, I do the same, Sandra. Right. Yeah. And, you know, what we're talking about is kind of how to... What we're really talking about is efficiency in all of this, right? Yes. Like it's efficiency. If you think of how they work in factories, that's the way I think of it. You know, like yeah. put all the wheels and like it's, exactly. it's called chain, it's chain work, right? Chain work. Well, they call it at Starbucks, they call it sequencing, which <laughs> is like, which is fascinating to me, right? As a word, the sequencing is there is a sequence. So when I walked in the other day and I totally was like, I got all my sequencing, right? The whole like staff just clapped because it was obvious I could not do it. <laughs> like I was really bad at it. So, um, so sequencing and and somebody, and one of my students said yesterday, yeah, oh, so you taught yourself. I'm like, oh, no, I didn't teach myself. This is very clearly, this is what everybody does. Everybody gets trained to do it this way, but it doesn't feel correct. You have to, and you also have to go through the process of doing it a few times. Like you have to intellectually understand it, and then you've got to let that go while you kind of you know work through so there's a lot of painting analogies which I'm which I think are really neat around this idea right we we're kind of working areas for a little bit and then we're moving around we're kind of doing the biggest jobs first and then we're going back to return I don't really feel like I can finish this car until I get my darks in everywhere Right, I need to get the darks are taking up a significant amount of real estate. Um, and there's a lot of things about that that would make one pause, right? Like your left brain is like, but wait, I haven't finished the car. And wait, that's the background. It's not important. But the background is hugely important, as we know, in setting up a painting, right? It's as important as the foreground. This is why Diana always asks, what do I do with my background? Because it's, and she asked it really early in the process, because this is as important as the background is as important as the foreground. So it's an, it, it, it's intellectually doesn't feel right, right? It doesn't feel, it's like, I think like our, our brains want to finish uh, something and then move on to the next thing. But that's not really an efficient way of working. And it's very easy to, to get kind of blocked and stuck because you can never, you know, it's very easy to like kind of uh, never be feel like you're finished, right? Has anybody here ever done a painting and been like, God, I never finished, you know, I'm just never, I can't get it right. I just keep working the same area and I can't get it right um that's like and sandra you know your dog are you still working on i just dog? sent you my dog 
Yay. Um, your dog, as you were working through your dog, you were very dissatisfied with it, but we were all like, this well, is amazing. But I've also fixed some of what I didn't like. Great. But I, I need some oh, help. Forward. Diana's so cute. Jesus Christ, Sandra, this is fabulous. Really? It's fucking yeah. fabulous. It's, it's fabulous. fabulous. I was wondering whether it was good enough to give it to him, actually. It's good enough to give it to him. You got this, you know, from the yeah, beginning. Yeah, it's perfect, Sandra. You hey, the don't need to do I, anything. The first thing I want to tell you, Sandra, is that from the beginning, you've been communicating with this animal spirit. It is obvious to me because you've got his emotion. And yeah. I think you even got that he misses his owner a little bit uh, uh, in the new the, place. The only thing I would do, Sandra, mm -hmm. is at looking at the picture, I would add a little bit more shade under the, under neck. the white side of the nuzzle. Uh, on the chest there. Yep, yep, Just on the chest. I was going to say the same yeah. thing. You can yeah. darken there. But Sandra, this is fabulous. It's beautiful. It's ready for the whisker. If though there's, there's even any whiskers, it's fabulous. Really, you think it's okay, and I, I don't need to do. I don't it. think it's I'm okay. Doing... I think it's fabulous. It is fabulous. I think really? it will make him cry. Oh. When you're, when you're, when it makes you, the person cry, then you know you've nailed it. I think they're going. I think it's going to be a huge emotional response. And you think it's, it's done aside from? Yep. Aside from that little. Let me show it to you like this. Yeah. What? Sorry. I can't see you. Sorry, because I can't see myself. Hold on. Can you put her in focus? Yeah, yeah. just just under the, just a dark the, in the neck. a little bit. On but the don't chest. do any. It's okay, like you see these lines. And yeah, yeah, that's, yeah okay. that's okay. That's okay. No, it's that's very okay. great. It's fabulous. Yeah. It's fabulous. So here's what I find really interesting. Sandra, you've just illustrated my point perfectly. Thank you. <laughs> Which is that, like, it doesn't feel right. You've been working from, I've been watching you do this painting and from the beginning it's been working and from the beginning you've been having trouble with it because it doesn't fit your idea of what the paint, right? Like this level of detail, because blah, 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 blah. Because blah, I'm blah. working from a very you You cannot, because you cannot see resolution. the detail. You can't exactly. see the detail. So it bothers it. you that you can't put the detail in. But what's interesting is it's forced from the beginning you've had this painting. At the very beginning stages, you've had this painting mm -hmm. because you can't see the detail, but your mind is telling you that you're wrong. But in reality, it's actually fabulous. Like it it's actually- Because works. I'm working blind. And it's interesting that when you work blind like this, you just have to go with its value. You can't see the details, so you just have to go with value, but it's very difficult because I'm working- ah, Hallelujah. I think, <laughs> I think colors, colors help with value and I'm working in monochrome and that's- yeah, yeah. That's very hard. For it's, that. great. It's, it's great. It's it's hard. It's intellectually hard, but these but the sequencing is correct. Yep. The sequencing is correct. Oh, Emma, that's having some really gorgeous. Uh, pay attention to the shape of your car back here, Emma. You've kind of lost it. Pull up the. Pay attention to that. But the, I love the colors. Look at how the glow is happening. It's fabulous. Looking great. Looking just great. Is oh, yeah, your, that's why. Is it your birthday today, Yannick? No, I think it was last week, wasn't it? Oh, it was Monday. Monday. Oh, was Monday. happy oh. related birthday then. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. That's because Diana is working all the time and all the days are blurring together. Don't mind <laughs> her. <laughs> So Sandra, I usually cele really celebrate one week so everyone can uh, basically make it. All right. So Sandra, you've really illustrated this for me though. She really has because the point is that like uh, she's forced to working the bigger shapes because there is no detail. Her brain tells her it's wrong, but all of us are seeing that it's absolutely right. So your sequencing of your drawing is exactly the same as with color. Uh, and it helped you not to see the detail and not to work from the detail, even though you didn't like it and it bothered you emotionally, right? It bothers you, but like, but you, you don't need it. 
And that's the uh, interesting thing about it. It feels wrong. It feels oh so wrong, but it's oh so right. <laughs> it's because, uh, and when you look at it through a camera on photo, I can see that it, it reads. But when I'm looking at it myself, I'm, it's like a bit writing without being able to see what you're writing. I think this is the 20,000 foot. The this is, think I think that you're having trouble getting to the 20,000 foot view. You're having trouble seeing the bigger picture. You're focused on the details and you're not seeing how those, uh, the bigger picture, how things lock together. Um, and that's the, that's a hard, you know, that's training, man. That's all I'll say. I get it. Uh, I was deciding that my, by the way, back to this painting, I was deciding that like uh, my light part here was a little bit too shaky. So I'm actually incorporating a ruler so I can, oh darn it, I'm going to have to do it again. Let's see. All right. So I think I will I need to move it. The dark part over into the middle. So here's where my here's where I'm gonna do what you guess. So you might have to use now yeah, that's a little bit better. That's a little bit better. Um, notice that my this part is a little bit too hard, so I'm going to blend it a little bit, make it softer. I want that transition from red to yellow to be a little bit softer. There we go. Now we're getting it oh, a little bit better. There. I may have to go back and flip that out a little bit. Change. I might have to use my ruler again, but at least it's better than it was. So my my temptation, right, is I could get obsessive about this, or I could just move around and then see, do I really need to do anything? You'll often find what I like about the sequencing of, I love that now, I'm going to use that all the time. What I like about the sequencing <laughs> of drawing and painting this way is that uh, you often find that the thing that you're obsessed about is not an issue once you start fixing the background, right? So like, it's an interesting... If you can let go of it just for a little while and be like, okay, I'm going to come back to you. Oftentimes you'll find it's not as big a deal as you think it is. And that's kind of a, and that's what I like about it. I'm at the end of the day, I, I want as many paintings as I can. I want to get as many paintings done as I can. And uh, I want to move fast and impressionism, which is kind of what everybody wants to do now, how we all think of a painting as contemporary people, is really more about um, less is more. And so that's how you achieve less is more. You don't get fussy about the details. But it's 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 easy to say it's easy to say it's tough to do. Um, kind of working this area. I know this is a little bit harder to see. But really, what I want to do is be working over here because I haven't finished over here. And all that talking, my paint dried. I need to get more ultramarine blue up here. What's the problem, Diana? Oh, it's just the usual. It's the usual. It's bothering you. Yeah, it's until I get there. Get to another stage of this painting. Um, I think the other thing that Starbucks, by the way, has really taught me, you guys, is how hard this thinking is. So it's brought me back to, oh, when I'm like, I've been doing painting so long, right? This feels normal to me. I'm like, why is this not obvious? Oh, it's really not obvious because your brain is, your left brain is fighting you the whole way, right? Your left brain wants it to be different and we got to train it. 
not to be. There we go. So now I can come back in here that I've got my darks in and I can start playing around with uh, adding more detail. So I can come into like this section, which I've sort of lost a little bit. And kind of lost that a little bit. I can go back in here. I didn't really, this is more blue is orange. So I'm going to add touch of like The less you fight, the less you fight the sequencing, the easier it becomes. The less you sort of try to make it something that it isn't, right? You'll catch yourself. If you don't know where to go or you feel stuck, you feel like you can, it's probably because you've gotten too stuck in one area. So your, your basic strategy is to get away from them. Don't like, get stuck in one place. Kind of bringing oh, Although this is a fairly simple composition, it's easy to lose your shapes. So don't don't let that happen to you because that will be a source of frustration. All of a sudden you'll look and you'll be like, where is my car? Where is my, and now I'm having this desire to put a few drips in. So I'm actually going to do that. I don't recommend that you do this. In fact, I probably shouldn't <laughs> is what I like to do, but, um, Question, please. Yes. Where do I put the seal? Here, right? Yes. Yes. Thank you. You knew that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, I guess, but I just wondered because sometimes Diana suggested I put in a different place on what I thought, and she was absolutely right. So I just thought I'd gotcha. it's a good thing to ask. It's a good thing to ask. Always good to ask. Do I want to? I'm just trying to decide how much detail I want to get into. I don't actually find all this detail that particularly interesting, so I'm probably um, not going to do too much. I put it in, and then I was like, eh, I'll see, maybe a touch of white. This definitely needs to lighten. So now I'm kind of working around, but now I'm kind of narrowing in on different parts. Uh, oops, that's way too light. Way too light and way too red. That's what I start to like kind of and I think this needs to be clearer. Yep. Kind of like the drips. I'm going to actually step back, take a minute. Oh, my seal came out perfectly. A bit of skew, but yeah. 
I bought, I bought, uh, I'm a wash in seal paste, but I finally found the one I wanted on eBay. They came from, came from China. I ordered some from Japan. I mean, but that's it. I found. Fabulous. Very happy. I'm taking a moment to stop here. I'll take a picture of where my painting is and uh, I'm going to stop. I'm literally going to stop and just look at it for a little while. Um, you guys are not painting at the same pace I am. So I don't think it's ready yet, but I think it's it's closer than I think. And if I get too caught up in detail, I'm gonna, there's corrections I'm gonna need to make. But this is a really good place to stop. Here we are. So I'm stopping here. And go ahead and feel free to share yours wherever it is. It's a really cool painting. I can feel I need more darts. Definitely, so I'm gonna stop here a little bit. Anyway, I'm also gonna make myself another cup of coffee. I'll be right back. Tell me, what do you want? What do you want? Hmm? What? Are you to? what? Oh, I have a helper. I have a helper. Get down. Thank you. Thank you, Sansan. Oh, she's very sweet. I have my dog and my cat here too. It's amazing how they always want to hang with you when you're. Yeah. Uh, if you want to, you can send yours over. I doubt I can concentrate more, so I might just watch that. I think we'll probably turn this class into a painting, drawing and painting, portraits and figures class. That seems to be the, the consensus so far. Make sure you kind of get in your wishes and your desires about what you'd like to do in class next year. You can ignore my wishes. I do whatever. Yes, we know. You do exactly what you want. What a fabulous <laughs> life. What a fabulous life you have. Yes. <laughs> And that is a way to use um,
uh, that is a way to use uh, my brain. Um, um, that is a way to use any of these class timings. You do not have to do what's in the class. Oh, Emma, that's looking great. Ani, that's looking fabulous. Oh, you guys, these are looking fabulous. Great time to stop. Make yourself a cup of coffee. Look at how different these are and how awesome they all are. This is what I mean about, oh, Diana, he's so cute. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost thinking of almost quitting. I have to fix the ear. I can't have the blue inside the ear that way. But Right. But I, just, but I love this. I think this is... I'm sorry, you guys, you've all just kind of gone to, and I'm hoping you're okay with it. I think one of the things that's hard in a painting like this at the levels where you're at is you're like almost having to accept, you know, what, where you, where, what your own marks, but I, I hope you're happy with these because they are really neat. And it also helps to take a picture of it, as Sandra has said, and look at it from far away. I know, right, Olga? I was kind of thinking about we would do this one for the next. Uh... Let's do more cats. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to come. Then you have to I come. Will. Yep, yep. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, Annika, very nice. Coming along. Yeah, it is. It's coming along, you guys, coming along. Take a break. Take yeah. a stretch break. Take a look and then we'll take a look at each one in turn and kind of make it let's and then we can talk about it together right so i'll look at each. we'll each we'll all look at each other's take a quick break i'm going to pour some coffee and then i'll be right back and then we will look at each other's work and you know maybe make some suggestions to help the person go a little farther i love it Peace, honey. Peace. Yeah, <clears throat> <clears throat> You win. You win. Looking great, Linda, I love it. Nice. I love this. When you guys are all back, I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna remove the spotlight for a minute and uh, just to really encourage the break. I wanna take a look at everybody's pieces that have been sent in so far. Let's start, maybe we should start with mine. Um, mine is the first one up there. So if I was, if you wanna take a look at mine, which was sent in at 921, what is the thing that you think, what is the thing that you think needs, I should do next? What I see is there's too much light in here. So I wanna kind of bring more darks in and maybe kind of work on this shape a little bit. I don't think I actually have it quite right. Those are my thoughts. 
Uh, I, I I think you have to mute everything but the car in the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so maybe a glaze, like a purple yeah. glaze over everything else. Great. Yeah. Fabulous idea. So maybe I'll start with the glaze actually and then go. And then go uh go back. Because you see, everything is kind, she's right. Everything's kind at this stage, everything's kind of jumping out mm -hmm. a little, is competing with each other. Uh any other thoughts before we move on to Onyx? Okay, Anik. I uh, I love where this is going. Uh, the shape of this car is problematic. It's a little bit too fat and wide. It needs to be kind of taller. And um, so, if you'll notice here, so from here to here, the the width is the same as the height. If you look at yours, you'll see that your height is less than your width here so really that height needs to come up yeah i i think this works pretty good uh, the the one thing by the car in the front you have that light blue uh, color between that and the other car and that needs to be muted so it yeah it's yeah. not the the same value as the front yeah. car yeah 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 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Thank you. There's a kind of mark. Do you have thoughts about it before we move on, Anik? Are you? Does that make sense to you? It does. It's just basically uh, I I I see where I have to do the uh, corrections, and I'm not really yeah, satisfied yeah. with where I am. I'm, about where I am. It looks nobody. Good. Nobody is, Anik. It looks nobody good, is. Though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's look at Emma's. Uh, Emma's, the colors on these are really fantastic. Um, so I'm thinking, do you have thoughts on where you need to start first? Unmute yourself, please. Um, I mean, when I did the drawing, I was kind of not really happy about the second part. And I still feel that area in the middle is kind of muddy and I'm sort of... It needs I've to made be it muddy because I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, the reason you've made it muddy is that this is actually significantly darker. I'm going to take a picture to show you. It's dark and there's lost edges. You can't really see where the car ends here. I'll pop this up so you can see it. One can't really see where the car ends and where this begins this background begins. So that's what we call a lost edge. It's very important to define in painting. I mean, when I say define, I mean, don't define the edge. You need to reflect the lost edge. So you need to get way darker. And I'll take a picture up close so you can really see what I mean by that. You just got too much light everywhere. Dark needs to kind of go in and define more. Uh, there we go. And probably, Anik, that'll help. It'll probably help all of you who need to reshape the car. That will probably help. Um, let's see here. Who's next? Zach. This is helpful. I like these little critiques. They're good. Uh, let's see. So we've got to Emma, Annika. Okay, let me look here. Annika, there's a problem with this shape. Your yeah. car window is too light. You've brought this up <clears> too high. So you need to take your dark and reshape your window so that it takes up more space. Okay. Yep. That's like the first thing. And then same, your car is the same problem that Onyx does. It's too squat. It's like a little squat car. It's as tall as it is wide. Yeah. So check that out. And you need to get much darker in your background, right? Yeah. Because those things that needs to push back. Um, any other thoughts, Diana? Anybody? No, I think you have to start there and then you'll take the next step. Yep, yep. 
Uh, Linda, I can see you totally starting to reshape your car here. It's fabulous. So yeah, just, I would say really push your darks right now. That is your next stage to get all your darks in, including okay. this lost edge. And then you're going to feel like you're almost done. So this yeah. grab area, get it dark, and then you can start popping the lights out. It's, it's actually really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I, as you know, I'm not a fan of glazing, but I think this works really well. On what are you, what are you talking about? You glaze all the time. <laughs> what are you talking about? You tell her glaze all the time. Maybe she doesn't. I mean, I tell her to glaze all the time. Uh, that's true. Yeah, no, it's working out really well. Yeah, it is. It's working out really well. It, it, uh, Everything is good. It's just you're in the dark phase right now. Get those yeah. darks in. So that this part of the painting recedes, right? So what Diana was pointing about about mine is that a glaze will push everything a little bit darker, but this whole area, even the light parts are a little bit darker and they need to push back. Um, Rashmi, I like this little green stripe you have in here, these kind of little green bits, but you're going to need to do the same thing, honey. Yeah. So you reshape your car, more yeah. darks. It isn't actually light around the bottom here, right? There's a last edge where we can't really see where this car yeah. ends and the background begins. Yeah, I'm I'm yet to like finish that part. I was tired. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it's looking great. I think the brushwork is beautiful, Sandra. That's just astonishing. Oh yeah, it <laughs> wonderful. So wonderful, uh... absolutely wonderful. And see how it helped with that little extra shade there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just pushes all the lights forward. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I would have given up almost, you know. I almost gave up. I almost. But you I almost, are really you don't good. do that anymore. You don't yeah. do that anymore. You're not a giver upper. You trust the process. <laughs> you trust the process. Leah. Yes. I have a question. So yeah. if you see the original picture, the car in the front looks uh, at a, like, you know, it, it, it's looking farther away from the main car. But in the picture that we are drawing, it's looking closer to it. So is it because of the crop or we are drawing it like that? I think that's why we, I, I drew it smaller because in the original picture, I found it a little farther away from the car. No, it's not uh, farther away. A crop doesn't change how far away it is. It's like I, it's it, this is the relationship. It, it's just to... that Leah's Leah's car in the background is a little bit too Good. bright now, so it comes forward more. Okay. It looks like it comes forward more. She's talking about the source, though. Oh, so okay. Sorry. She's talking Sorry. about the source. So I want you, Rashmi. That will not change. No, the yeah. problem <laughs> that you guys are having is that you're adding an edge here where there isn't one. Oh, okay. that's the problem that you're having. I want you to look. This shape is here. Here's the relationship of those two shapes. You need this piece. You need that piece. You need this piece. Right? Yes. It's not. Yep. You got to stop. Think, right. So the idea is to think like a painter. To think like a drawer. Mm -hmm. You don't just think about the car, the car. Mm -hmm. You think about what are the shapes between the cars and what you guys are struggling with honestly really what you're struggling with is just uh uh like making these this relationship the same oh, and you're struggling with the fact that you can't see the whole car so and 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 uh and and that is what's really causing the problems it's like you're trying to imagine what's going on. You can't see it. So if you can't see it, don't paint it. <laughs> I mean, that's like lost edges are very important in art. They are very important in showing three dimensions. And that's because you're showing a strong shadow crossing across a subject. So okay. strong shadows will eliminate parts of edges, parts of parts of edges of things. But your brain tells you there should be something there. And the thing is, it's down here, but it's not up here. It's up here, but it's not down there. It's this middle part that, that y'all are struggling with. Um, anyway, carry on. Let's do it. We've got, uh, Emma, got 20 more minutes. Did we critique Emma's? Yes, we did. I did self-criticism. 
<laughs> communist style. Yes. I'm Sorry. To, that was funny, defense. though. <laughs> they have to do this self criticism. Yeah. <laughs> Sunny, you have to wait. We're almost done. You have to wait. Yeah. Samsung. Sorry, I had to grab a, a plug. My computer was about to die. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with that little advice. I'm gonna glaze everything in my back. I'm gonna push everything back. I've got a visitor now. Let's see. Come say hello. Hi. The boy or girl? The boy, right? Boy. What's his name? Oh, so he's all cool. mellow too. He's so all could... mellow too. Oh. So, so I couldn't hear the name. What was the name? Sona. It means golden and Hindi. How perfect! Oh, cool! How perfect! It means what did you say? Gold. Golden. Oh, right, right, right. Very nice. So I'm glazing back. A little bit too much red in there. I'm glazing the back. And now you're all like, what? All is lost. But it's not true. Oh, yeah, that doesn't. Look at what that does. That really helps a lot. I can pull out any little bit I want. Uh, nice, Anik. Much better. Much better. Fabulous. Super. Thank you. So notice, even as I kind of pull my oranges out, see that how they're subdued a little bit, just a touch. That glaze does everything. Fabulous advice, Diana. Absolutely. Look at how much, even though it's bright, but it's not yes. bright to compete with this. But I'm not going with it. I'm not going with it. Now I can go back and start kind of popping in little tiny highlights. You can go with Abby. Are you going to be out for him? Okay. Thank you. Can you let him, Sammy? Oh, kind of shape. Now I'm kind of coming back in and adding in some of my brights <laughs> in areas. <laughs> Right, so now after this fabulous guys, by the way, Diana, great suggestion. It really helped. Yep. Now see, I'm adding in these little light bits that are kind of stronger. And on the front of the car. It's easier to see the problems in other people's work. Always, always. That's why we had this class, right? And that's yep. my... And that's why, uh, and, and also, you know, it takes experience, right? Of working with 
for a long time before you start to get the, the system, the way things are, are working. I really love how this is looking. It's now, this is not exactly how it's looking in the painting, but in the photograph, but I'm kind of liking it enough that I'm like, oh, do I even want to like get much more? Detailed, I don't know. I need to jump off, guys. Thank you very much, Leah. All right. Fabulous work today. Uh, no class next week. I'll send you guys a reminder. Please okay. try to remember. Uh, and great to see you, Emma, as always. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. This terrible colonizer holiday of ours. <laughs> Yet one of the few. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. My hey, 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 get off. Jesus. Dude, he just wants to be with you guys today. He's all over the computer in a way he normally is not. That's better. Hey, <laughs> he's just got to be here. Here, hold on. He's really just got to be here. Like, I got to sit here. Pay attention to me. That's really coming along, Anik. Very nice. I feel like my, I accidentally, my, maybe my wheel got too big or something off about. Oh yeah, there we go. Now you're starting to come together. Hmm. 
Stop it, Hermes. <laughs> Olga, how cold is it? How cold is it in Poland? It's snowing today. Oh, nice. It's really snowing. I can send you a video later. It's like I have like small garden uh, outside my window and it was like completely in the snow. Oh, beautiful. It's so, so it's like it's pretty cold. It's still like I think minus three or five or something like this, but like it's already snowing and it was so unexpected like today. Oh, beautiful. It's getting How cold. How is the weather at your? So at night it freezes. It's just begun freezing at night. And right now it's only about five, six degrees, but I've just been to remove leaves from a pond with my hands and it's freezing cold. Oh. And I removed a pump for the fishes and I put a heater. The heater is only so that there's a hole when it freezes over and they can still breathe. Uh, but they Ooh. like to swim. 
so yeah winter is coming here too but cats still going outside even it's, if it's cold oh the cats yes but they mm -hmm. don't stay long. they've just been out now they've just been out because there's a if they go to the sunshine mm. still they don't stay very long like they do in summer uh, but they like to it's good for them because they put on their winter fur you know? Ah yes, they are making like more fluffy or something like this. Yeah, I think, and I think they need to do that. You never know, you know. They put that they put the winter fur, and then they'll lose it for the summer. Yeah, but still, it's nice that they still can go outside. I okay. don't know what cats are doing here. It's like it's it's like snow everywhere. Wow. Yeah, they don't. Uh, these guys, they don't like snow very much. I dig trenches for them. They don't like to walk in the snow. <laughs> my, my previous guys, they, they didn't care. They went out even by minus five. I think that was pretty much the, the lowest they would go. Hmm. Yeah, not even all the leaves are fallen yet. But uh, normally it's, war it's milder this time of year here. But this year the cold has come early, and I figured. Yeah, it... I feels like like here it's also a bit strange because I remember a month ago everything was like green, and now it's like snowing, and it's just the middle of November, so it's like completely too early, I think. Yes, usually here yeah, until um, December, early December, it's usually much milder than say in London. But that's not the case. And Leah, we must ask Leah because she said last week it was really cold in Oregon. Mm. Cool. Interesting. Except Diana and Annika are staying tropical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, I would say that here in Dines, the past week's weather wasn't natural. Like today, maybe we did an Arizona in November, but but it's cold as it's supposed to be, while last week it was yeah. and that's not. Normally, on the 1st of November, when all the Poland goes to the cemetery to light, put the lights, normally you take winter coat and, and, and boots. And uh, this year it wasn't the case till my birthday, which is not normal. So mm. it's like a but sudden attack of winter. Warming. Global warming. <laughs> yeah. And it looks, you, look, yours looks so sharp and clear. Thank like you. It was lines and very sharp. It's my first ever cityscape. <laughs> I've never painted any, but it doesn't appeal. Oh, you guys, and that looked hard. Oh, you guys are doing a fantastic job. Yeah, and if you look like a bit from far away, it looks like a photo, like really like a photo. And it's like I'm I'm looking at yours, and it's like hey, it's because you. you've managed to put the part that's close by really in sharp focus, yeah. and the back yeah. is, um, is more hazy, and that that photo impression, and the the reflection on the car is very good as well. Yep, I agree. No, I, and the, I have something about the sharpness of the lines. Like uh, even yes. if I try to get fuzzy, it, it, it doesn't work for me. It's just basically no, don't get fuzzy because the sharp. If they look great like this. Thank you. Oh. Leah, I think you're on mute again. <laughs> Thank you, Olga. <laughs> <laughs> Hold the mic. Uh, Ter Hermes turned it on when he jumped on the keyboard the last time. Um, hold up your pieces. It's the end of class. Let's see where you're at. Let's uh, hold it up because it's good to kind of step away. And uh, you need to take your backgrounds down or we can't see it. Ooh, some nice, dark, dramatic. Fabulous. Can oh, I take wow. it? Oh, oh, God, that looks great. Hold them up. Beautiful. Rashmi, hold your image up. Please turn your video on and hold your image up. And I'm going to take a picture. Paul, it's, um, oh, yep, that looks great. Hold on. Looking good. I have a streak of sunshine, sunshine on mine. I can't tell. Hold that. on. I Yes, that's all right. Or it's here, LA. 
There we are. Oh, Rashmi, fabulous. Love it, you guys. I love it. These are amazing. You're great. Move. Or great, 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 great. What a wonderful class. <laughs> what a wonderful group. Although we are, it's so nice to see you here, Paul. It's nice to see you join on a Friday morning. Um, Rashmi, I, I, love I, I, that. I try my darn tootinist and I, I made it, so I'm proud of myself. You did good. And Rashmi, yeah. I like that blue splash on the right. Um, you might like not get rid of it so much. You might mute it mm -hmm. back just a little bit, but yes. I feel it gives a kind of, I like the way it kind of works with the other pieces. It's different, right? So One at some the point, her, yeah, the part on the left. I yeah, kind yeah. of like that blue. I don't want her to yeah. totally get rid of it. Maybe mute it a bit. Here's where we all start to like kind of play around, right? Now you this, the photo is the beginning, but like really this painting is yours. You get to make decisions about how it is and where it goes and all of that. So um, fabulous work, everybody. Uh, no class next week, but we will be back the following week with a new subject. I was... Does, if anybody has thoughts, please share them across the thread. I know yeah. it seems. Huh? What is there on Sunday? I've kind of lost the plot of Sundays. Uh, 